Hey everybody. Today we're going to go a little more in depth with MIDI Designer where I actually assign functions to each of the controls and I will go over some of the different types of, of uh, changes that they can do and how to program for system exclusive changes and understanding hexadecimal. Stick around. <laughs> So what I've got going on here, um, I know this looks a lot different from last episode where I was showing how to put the controls onto the actual screen and everything. I kind of gave myself some time to um, go through and, and figure out exactly how I wanted to set this up. Now original, my original plan was to have everything all on one page, but given the fact that there's so many different parameters I got to make controls for, um, I've decided to actually do two pages and I will design the second page at a later time. But this is going to be pretty much the front page where all four operators will be designated. Um, so starting over here, I've got operator one. This one down here will be operator two. This will be operator three, operator four. Um, they will all have the same controls and with the exception of operator four, I'm gonna make another control over the top here for the feedback function, which is the only operator to have that. Now, you can also see here, I've labeled some of the controls, you know, A, R, which is attack rate, you know, decay one rate, decay one level, decay two rate, and release rate, similar to what you'd see on a, an envelope for an analog synthesizer. I've got my frequency button over here, which goes through the frequency ratios, or it's a knob, excuse me. Uh, the detune, I have the key scaling, and then I have the output for the operator. And uh, when, when we do hook this up to test all the parameters and everything, I'll show you what all the functions do and how they all work. Um, these buttons down here, the scaling up, scaling down, they work together because there's that's what they'll do. And I just want to be able to hit a button for one, one going up or down. And then this turns on the amplitude modulation. So that's what this is. And uh, now we're going to get into the um, part where we program each of these controls. Okay, so what I've got going on here is, here is a page from the actual Yamaha DX27 manual. And it shows you the voice parameters um, for each of the operators and some of the master controls here. Now, what everything that's written in ink pen off to the side, I'll explain that in a minute, and I'll especially explain this. Now, uh, this synthesizer is, is, you know, was made back in the 80s. So um, it kind of did things different when it, when it came to MIDI. And what they did was they used a system exclusive uh, program programming for these things. So in order to get this to respond to, like, say, for instance, what I'm doing here, we had to use um, hexadecimal um numbers and a parameter address I guess is what we would call it and that's what this number is right here um, now the way MIDI designer works is it'll take those four things and the V or the L which the L I'm not going to be using I'll explain that in a minute and then there are two other characters that go on either side of that well MIDI designer does not need those so really the 43, 10, 12, whatever that value is, and the V is what we're going to be programming. So if you look over here, I made a chart, a SysX chart, where I labeled out all of the controls and what their um, parameter controls were. And that is where what we're going to be doing today um, with that. So um, the way this works, is you can go in uh, let's see what haven't I got here let's let's try the detune here because I don't think I've done the parameters for it yet okay so now I'm in design mode and 
we double tap and it pulls up the properties okay um, I've already labeled it here and I have not done anything else to it so we're gonna go in under the MIDI right here Let's see we're gonna go under the MIDI tab which is right here okay and if you see it's got a channel and control change number assigned to it and you know it says message type control change now if we were doing standard MIDI programming this would be fine this is what we would use but instead we're going to use um, system exclusive or sysx so you know we have a couple of node on node off choices non-registered parameter number so on and so forth program change bank select pitch bend and there's a few others in there, but we're going to use sysx. So we're going to say that and hit apply now. And then when we go back, it changes. And then it will ask you for your um, your sysx bytes, or I call it an address, but it says sysx sys excuse me sysx bytes in hex, meaning hexadecimal. And the way hex hexadecimal works is you go zero through nine and then before you get to 10 you'll go through the letters a b c d e f and then 10 and then it does that for each one so that adds six more characters than the 10 digit base so for instance um, this one will have a, the, the, the parameter number is 33 and what I did is I took the parameter number and figured out according to you know I had to look all this stuff up and do it and I took notes which I'm glad I did because when I lost my original layout if I didn't have these notes I'd have to go and do my research all over again so I made sure I took notes inside the manual and left them there so that I could do this and then when I was setting up for this video today I went ahead and wrote everything down so I'm not searching for a number so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna punch in the hexadecimal thing here and um, so it's gonna be 43 space 10 12 now the detune parameter number is gonna be 33 and then V okay now that we got that we hit apply now and then when we go back that's the number that's displayed so now that is programmed and what I've been doing so that I remember where how far I've gotten and everything is after each one I'll ex exit design mode and I'll turn it all the way down now something else I forgot to do here um, we need to set up its. Um, we need to set up, you know, its range. Which um, let's see, I wrote that down too here in my other notes. Let's see here, detune for three. Okay, so with detune, it's gonna go zero to six but I think you can either go plus three or minus three so what I'm going to do is go back in under properties display minimum and maximum I'm gonna go negative three there to positive three for the detune that hit apply now we back out and then it'll show that number of ticks and we're gonna go and we're gonna put in uh, seven okay so now what this will do is when I use it if I want it to be um, not detuned it'll be at zero and then I can either go plus three or minus three so I want to change this to 
I don't know if I need to do this or not, but I'm going to do it anyway here. So, All right. So now that's done. And I'm going to exit from design mode, and I'm going to go ahead and return it to zero. Okay. So this way, by putting everything on zero, the things that I've programmed, this will tell me where I left off. So, like, if I don't finish this, you know, I can do that. Now, the buttons, I'm going to have to obviously go back in and double check. But at least this, this is like checking it off the list for me. That way I can keep track of everything that I've programmed up to this point. Now, if you'll also notice over here on operators 3 and 4, I have not changed the colors or labeled any of the faders or knobs yet. And that's because I started doing this off the camera so that I'm not wasting you guys' time or anything. The, my videos tend to be really long and lots of talk in them anyway. But at least this way, you can see what's going on and how it all works. Um, and then once I get this done and all these programmed, I will go in and I will put in another page um, and then make like a master control where, you know, some of the global functions will lie and uh, and that I want to put in the LFO section and stuff because um, I think it's really going to expand upon my flexibility with the, with the um, DX27. Um, so that's where we're at today. Um, next time we'll go in and we're going to, once I get all the pro values pro plugged in, uh, the next video we're going to show with the iPad actually hooked up via MIDI to the DX27 and make sure all the controls work. And then that's where we'll do all of our fine tuning and tweaking and making sure that we've got everything working the way that we want to. Aesthetically, this is what I want you know, everything to look like. Um, I'm still going to put some labels in here so I know which operator is which. And uh, if you have any questions or comments or anything that you want to add to what it is that um, I'm doing here, if you already know something about MIDI Designer and you have some information that might prove useful for this, please leave something in the comment section. I really would appreciate that. Um, once again, thank you everybody for liking the videos, watching them, subscribing, and um, uh, supporting me in all of this. Uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you.